Hey YouTube, today I'm going to be doing a video demonstration on how to install a rooftop air conditioner on a Forest River pop-up trailer. Now this particular trailer that I'm going to be working on is actually a Rockwood Freedom Series 2280. Uh, but I mean this basically applies to any of the more modern Rockwood and Flagstaff Palomino and essentially pretty much any pop-up trailer made by Forest River. Now the air conditioning unit that I'm going to be installing is actually a Dometic 13,500 BTU rooftop AC. It weighs about 80 pounds installed and uh, of course this unit I just purchased from our local RV dealer for about 900 bucks Canadian. So one of the first things we got to do before we do any work is we need to pop up the trailer and confirm that our unit here is actually pre-braced for the air conditioning. So this is what the inside of my pop-up trailer looks like and as you can see I've got one of those fold down galley sinks and stove set up but essentially right here is the walkway and directly above the dinette which is located just over there you can see that on this rockwood I've got a screw located in the ceiling and that screw actually marks the location of the 14 by 14 hole which is what we're going to need to cut to install the air conditioning unit. Now the other thing you want to consider before doing a job like this, which will typically take someone anywhere between three to maybe even five hours if you're really slow, is make sure that if you're working on it outside that you're not expecting any rain anytime soon or that you have access into an enclosed space such as a garage in the event that it should start to rain. So this is what the AC unit looks like unboxed and I really recommend that when you open up the packaging that you have a strong helper to help you fin sort of wrestle this thing uh, out of the packaging because it's actually quite heavy. Um, but anyways I was able to do it on my own with a lot of struggling. But The key thing here is that when I was unboxing it that I didn't actually damage this box and the reason why is that we're actually going to reuse it to contain all the uh, junky bits that are going to fall out of the ceiling when we're cutting the hole. Now. One thing to keep in mind too is that when you're buying this air conditioning unit or any air conditioning unit that you actually have to buy an additional part here uh, which is what they call the air distribution box. So this part on its own is about 150 bucks and of course on the inside it actually contains the air distribution box here with the louvers as well as the uh, compression mounting plate that goes on the underside of the pop-up ceiling. And this is what the ADB looks like when we've removed it from the packaging. We've got the sensing bulb here uh, for the thermostat, so you want to be really careful that you don't damage the uh, thermal bulb. The power connectors that go to the actual AC unit, your temperature control knobs, the input wiring, and of course on the top cover assembly, we've got some various gaskets, the louvers, as well as the mounting hardware to sandwich all this stuff together. So the first step here in preparing to cut the hole into the ceiling of our pop-up trailer is on any Forest River pop-up that has been pre-reinforced from the factory to accommodate an air conditioning unit will actually have this marking screw in the ceiling. Uh, and basically this screw uh, denotes the relative location of that 14 by 14 hole which I had mentioned is actually positioning the air conditioner directly over the trailer's axles which of course helps with not contributing extra weight onto your trailer's tongue. Um, now on the Forest River units because they're factory reinforced um, you got to be careful when you're cutting this hole because the roof trusses span this way left to right inside the trailer and they're made out of metal but the end ones uh, so when you're cutting I guess front to back you're going to hit the metal bracing which is going to be a little bit difficult to cut through and that's sort of your stop point. But you got to err on the cautious side because right along here, along the ceiling seam and then on the opposing end, 14 inches away, it's actually just wood. So if you're not careful and pay attention to how you're cutting it, you may actually cut right through the roof reinforcements which is a real bad thing. Just remove this marking screw and then use a large drill bit to punch a hole through into the fiberglass roof. We want to save the RV air conditioner box for later use and the reason why is that when we're cutting this hole out we want to have this box sandwiched in between inside our ceiling and our dinette area to capture all the dust and fiberglass and metal shards that will be falling down when we're using our reciprocating saw to saw through the roof line. 
So I've placed the box directly underneath. And then with a, wearing a pair of safety glasses, we're going to use a drill bit here and we're going to punch through the roof. Now what we want to do now is we actually want to drop this roof line such that this box, uh, we're going to be cutting a hole towards one of the sides here. So in looking from the back to the front of this trailer, I'll be cutting towards the left. So I want to place this box in a position where I can sandwich it such that it catches all the debris um, you know when it's up against the roof like this. Now before we do any work or even think of getting into our trailer we want to make sure that our trailer is parked on a sort of a even ground if possible. In my case I've got a sloped driveway so I made sure that both wheels are chalked that my stabilizer jacks are down and that my trailer is going to be as level as I can get it. Go ahead and lower the roof line until it closes up on the box. So now you can sort of see how that's all sandwiched up like that to catch all the debris. So you can see here there's my fantastic fan and then just directly ahead of it towards the middle of the trailer you're gonna see the hole where you punch through to uh, drill or when you drill that hole through the ceiling line. So this is where it kind of gets a bit dicey is that you gotta get some styrofoam like board insulation or some wood here, um, lightweight pieces of wood, and you need to just carefully get onto the roof line and begin sawing out the hole. Now I'm not really sure if you can see here from my dirty roof that there's a there's a roof line support that goes this way and then one that goes this way which is indicative of um, that 14 inch hole. And now for my own sanity check I'm going to actually open up that roof hole through my fiberglass roof just a little bit more. Now again, be very careful careful when you're working on the roof because it's not very strong overall to support a full weight of an adult. So as I had mentioned earlier, the trusses run left to right on the top of the roof and they're, met, they're metal. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna saw front to back until we can just feel our reciprocating saw blade contact them and then we're going to stop and then just cut out little chunks at a time wherever possible. So I felt the top there, so now I'm going to do the same for the back. right there. I'm going to cut this way. And then just very carefully push that down. Do the same. Now it does help to have your drill handy to help drill out the spots where you can't turn very well. And so that'll give you a bit of a guide and where to cut.
sweep all this junk down into the hole. Now remember, this is fiberglass, guys. So you can actually get fiberglass slivers. So you wanna, you know, err on the cautious side a little, right? So this is what the hole looks like once we've completed the cut as clean as we can, which by the way, I've made a little minor boo-boo right there by cutting it a bit just too far. Um, that's probably not going to affect the structural integrity. It's just a tiny wedge. Um, the weight is actually being supported by the steel bracing anyways, built in for the factory. And of course, you need not worry about the cut being 100% perfect. Um, I don't think when you're cutting with a recip saw that you could ever actually get it exact. But what we're going to do is just take a hammer now and just hammer up this metal edge against the bottom side of this frame and what this will do is that it'll just keep those sharp edges sort of pressed down as well as uh, giving it that nice clean finished look. Now if you still got some sharp metal edges on the inside of your hole you can always take like a file and just file that last little bit off just to smooth things out. As you can see here when you hammer up the edges it gives it a really nice finish and it's relatively smooth and I've only run the file over the edge just very lightly to clean it all up. Alright guys, so this is what the hole looks like. So you can see here, it's really 14 by 14. There's the front metal support brace, the rear one that's also metal, and then the sides are wood. Now, one thing we want to be really careful on is when we're moving this air conditioning unit not to necessarily drag it on the roof because there's this big fat gasket underneath that could get damaged but on that same token having an extra helper does make a huge difference I unfortunately don't so I'm moving this all on my own So we just, I'm applying some gentle forces just to shift this thing around on the roof line. And the trouble with installing this as well, on your own or even with a helper, is that you don't want to necessarily put any weight on the roof because the air conditioning unit alone is already 80 somewhat odd pounds. And combine that with a full size adult, which is probably another 200 pounds um, that could spell disaster on the roof of this RV because it was never designed to take that much weight. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to rough position it on the pop-up and then I'm going to pop it up on the roof to, uh, to align it from the inside. So now that we've got our opening here for our roof with the AC on it, we want to just carefully maneuver the air conditioning unit over the opening such that it's as centered as you can, such that it's centered over the hole. And so um, I'm just going to carefully lift and shift um, the AC unit around as needed, uh, taking care not to drag it as little as possible for fear of damaging the gasket surfaces. Now. The trick to getting this a seal well is to make sure that the positioning of the unit is uniform. So once we've got our unit centered over our opening and we're happy with the placement, we're going to go ahead and take this um, intake and exhaust separator block and we're going to trim off the appropriate number of rows according to the depth of the roof of this pop-up camper. Now, um, according to Dometic's owner's manual, it says minimum roof thickness one and a half inches, which means I need to remove nine rows of, uh, of these foam blocks. But um, unfortunately on the Forest River units, uh, they're actually thinner than that. They're actually just one inch thick. So I've actually gone and removed 10 rows and basically there's nothing left uh, on the spacer block except for the for the bare bones base block and 
The purpose of this block is to ensure that we separate the intake from the exhaust so that it's not just recirculating uh, within the air conditioning unit. Um, so I've trimmed this down already. It's really easy. You just take an X-Acto knife and you just trim across the foam and then uh, insert it up into the opening towards the uh, exhaust side hole here. And you can generally understand how the placement is supposed to look. Um, just because of the fact that on the ADB clamping plate, there's actually a groove here on the back side that will allow this um, separator block to go in. Now, the trick here is that once you've made the trims, the appropriate trimming off of the spacer block, and it says this side faces towards the front of the AC, that you want to get the soft foam part to go in first. And the reason why is that on the spacer plate itself, uh, or on the clamping plate, sorry, it actually has a strip of foam as well underneath in the channel right here where this little spacer block is going to go. So we're just going to roughly place it just in front of the exhaust outlet on the unit, making sure that it's placed properly. And then we're going to um, mount this plate on, which will sandwich the this piece here, uh, the AC unit between the roof and the clamping plate. Now on this particular model, it's a Dometic B57915. And according to the instruction manual, we're gonna be using the outermost mounting holes. I strongly advise that you actually pre-mark the holes so you don't make the mistake of puncturing the seal and trying to drive a screw in crookedly. Now the unit comes with four really long screws and that's to accommodate for roof thicknesses for as little as one inch technically an inch and a half to six inches deep like you would find on a travel trailer. So I'm just gonna fish these bolts through and hand thread them in first so that I know I'm not stripping anything. And once I know I've got them screwed in by hand where I know they won't cross thread, I'm gonna take my drill with a 3 8 nut driver on the end. And I'm just gonna slowly, on the lowest torque setting, screw the bolts in. Now we wanna tighten this in a crisscross pattern. Now again, you want your drill on the lowest torque setting so that it doesn't strip the bolt or damage the, the base pan of the AC unit. And of course, during the course of tightening, we want to also shift our little spacer block accordingly as the plate gets closer and closer to closing this gap um, so that it sits properly inside the channel. So again, I could reach in and just adjust the block just minutely to give me that good tight seal. Continue tightening. Now, um, the bolts are supposed to be tightened anywhere between 40 and 50 inch pounds, which works out to about three foot pounds. Under no circumstances should you ever be using a torque wrench to tighten this down because no torque wrench, even those ones used for engine manufacturing, are ever accurate enough to properly measure three foot pounds. And what's gonna end up happening is that you could end up potentially cracking the base pan of the AC unit, which pretty much means you need a new air conditioner. Um, you know, the worst case scenario is that if there's a slight leak, you can always tighten up the clamping plate a little bit more, um, but you, there's no going back if you over tighten it. So I've uh, just continued tightening a little bit more. And then now I'm gonna get a ratchet and hand tighten them a little bit further.
So this is our clamping plate after we've roughly installed it and given it sort of a preliminary tightening. And I'm just going to finish out the job by using a quarter inch drive ratchet with a 3 8 inch socket. I'm just going to torque them down a little bit more until they're firm um, and snug. Remember, if you keep twisting these, they'll probably keep turning until something breaks. So three foot pounds, you could almost literally turn it by hand with your fingers plus a bit more. And that's that's usually tight enough. And so um, the screws could have kept going, but I didn't want to continue turning. Um, we're going to reach up into the intake. We're going to pull down the AC power cord and then plug it into the control panel here into the center connector on this Dometic unit. And now you can't plug it in the wrong way because it's polarized. And then of course this little temperature sensing bulb tells the air conditioner when to turn on and off and you want to be careful that you want to break this because there's a really fine capillary tube inside. So the once we've installed so once we've secured the air conditioning unit to the roof the next step here is to install the power pass-through outlet here and the one I'm using is actually made by a company called Marine Co or Park Power They're the same company and this is basically how Forest Server specs out their air conditioning systems where we have the power line run along the roof here and then pass through the sidewall of the roof which then an external extension cord will pass along the side of our trailer and into the power converter box. So in this case, um, because the power converter is located almost in the middle by the dinette area on this trailer, that it only makes sense to just have the power cord dangle along the side of the trailer. So here is a center column where the window is going to be. So it would make the most sense to put the hole um, in this line so that you don't actually ever see the cord when you're looking at the windows. And so Park Power clearly states that you want to use a 1 and 7 8 inch hole saw to, um, to pass through on the outlet. So uh, you want to pay attention here that you don't puncture your canvas, which is just in this general vicinity. And I've just pulled off the valence a little bit to give me more clearance so I can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to take my hole saw. And you might have to shift the door all the way, by the way. And this is what that hole looks like from the outside. As you can see here, it follows the center line of the window, which then goes into our power outlet on the side of the trailer. So this is what this power pass-through outlet um, looks like. And basically, all it is is just really allowing you to plug in an extension cord with a 20 amp uh, connector, as denoted by this horizontal plug. Um, and it's got the cover, which acts as the gasket. And then it just converts it back to a number 12 gauge Romex or Lumex uh, cable that feeds into your air conditioner. Now um, the locking nut on this uh, particular outlet might not be applicable on this Forest River pop-up simply because the threaded portion isn't actually long enough to accommodate the thickness of the sidewall. Um, but basically just an installation tip here is that you want to rotate the little cover for the outlet such that the holes sort of line up properly and then mount it such that the grounding plug is upside down. The reason why is that then the wording on the cap um, is in the proper direction and the fact that when it rains um, water's not gonna, well I don't know if it actually helps but uh, rain will just drip off this way uh, on the vertical face. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna align it the way we want it and then drill three pilot holes and then install the three included Phillips screws. Now here's a quick service tip guys, is that when you're drilling the pilot holes uh, into the sidewall of the trailer's roof, make sure that you don't actually put the drill bit all the way through the roof as the screws aren't very long and you don't want to introduce more holes than necessary, uh, especially those that pass through to the interior of the camper. And this is what the finished product looks like once it's been installed. Now the next step that we want to do here is measure out a wire concealment channel that we're going to attach to the ceiling of this pop-up 
But before doing so, I may as well go ahead and take some rubbing alcohol and then applying it to a paper towel and just give the surfaces of where I'm going to adhere the wire channel to a quick rub to remove any grease and oil and to give it maximum adhesion. Now the wiring channel I'm going to be using is widely available at any home improvement store and uh, it just attaches with just some double sided tape that comes with it. Go ahead and measure from the unit to the wall. So here I've got 24 inches and so just to give us enough turning clearance on the cable I'm going to shave off about a full inch and make it 23 inches long. And now go ahead and install the wiring channel onto the roof. Making note that you do need a little bit of a gap on the end for the cabling to pass through. Next what we're going to do is that we're going to wire the air conditioner into the side power outlet and we're going to do so by using 12-2 uh, cabling that you can buy at your local Home Depot. So how we're going to do this is we're just going to run the cabling inside the channel. And this is why you need this cable channel to be shorter um, than the measured length to the very end to accommodate for the fact that you're going to have some, oh it's quite rigid. And then, if you're really particular, you can even buy a cable channel to run it along the sidewall here. Make sure that you pay attention to which cable goes where on the connector. And generally speaking, they are clearly identified with black, white, and green, indicating hot, neutral, and ground. Ensure that you stripped off enough insulation, otherwise you're not going to have a solid connection and could get overheating and arcing due to the high current loads of the air conditioning system. Now, if you've got a situation here where your cable connectors don't want to quite go in or you can't access the set screws, you're going to have to undo the outlet from the side. So once we've secured our cabling, we can go ahead and slide on the protective boot onto the end of the connector to prevent any accidental shorts. Now, because this is a air conditioner that's being mounted on top of a pop-up trailer, we don't have any means to pass the AC through the framing inside um, the roof line, uh, 
like it typically would be in a travel trailer or in a motorhome. Um, how we've got it routed here is that we've got a surface mount wire channel encasing this number 12 cable and of course it's just going to have to pass through um, the air intake sort of foam seal underneath the grill which will then loop through and pass through the knockout into the junction box. Now when you buy a Dometic air conditioner they always come with a single a half inch knockout adapter. <coughs> so we're just going to go ahead and install this uh, such that uh, when you're tightening up the screws to clamp the cable down that it doesn't you know get in the way of any plastic parts where it's uh, you'll sort of understand what I'm referring to as you screw it down these studs will come out and start poking into things and you want to just put it off at a slight angle if possible um, so that it's easy to tighten. To tighten it down we just Tap the backer ring, the screwdriver, and then carefully pass the cable through the clamp, paying careful attention not to bend this power cable in an awkward manner where it kind of kinks the wire internally. And you'll sort of get what I mean by just the way it kind of twists in this weird manner uh, to get into the roof line. So, and once that's done, Go ahead and reach in to your outlet and just tighten down that cable clamp accordingly. Strip the insulation jacket off. To remove. grounding cable to the grounding terminal in the box. Connect your neutral. With a wire nut. Just give your wire nuts just a nice tug to make sure that they're secured. And then using a strip of black tape, secure the wire nut to the wire. The reason why we want to do this is in any mobile vehicle, movement from bouncing around on the road can lead to connections working themselves loose. And you don't want to be surprised with either arcing inside the junction box of your air conditioner due to loose connections or it not working altogether. Tight connections is the key to prevention of fires and reliable operation. Just neatly tuck your cables into your junction box and then just bending the inlet cable such that it's as straight as possible.
like so. Using the supplied screws from Dometic, install the junction box cover. And this is what the cable looks like routed around the intake gasket over and into the wire clamp. Now one of the next steps we have to do is loosely install the air distribution cover onto the ceiling clamping plate or what they call the mounting template. And we're going to do this by removing the intake grill here by just simply popping it out and then take note that there's a hole in this corner and a hole in this corner that need to mount into the tiny little holes kind of tucked in underneath this foam gasket located here and here and so I'm just going to loosely mount it the reason why I want to do this is so that I can actually get the, uh, the cover aligned properly such that I can mark with a Felt marker, the proper location where to cut the wire pass through for the air conditioning unit. Now, it's super important because if you don't cut out the notch, then you can sort of see this humongous gap on the cover, which is a little bit unsightly. So, we want to make sure that we've got a nice professional finished looking installation. So, I've just installed this cover with just the two screws as directed and now I'm going to go ahead and get a felt marker to mark the spot where I have to cut out. So I know that the starting position is going to be right here and right here. Go ahead and remove the top cover. So what I'm going to do here is just use a Dremel tool with a grinding wheel just to grind out the channel to be as wide and as big as the cable channel that I used on the ceiling. And you want to take your time doing this job um, just because the quality of time and effort you put here will show up in the final results. I couldn't take my own advice and got a little overzealous from my cuts. And as you can see here, I made it just a hair too wide. But that's not really a big deal because no one's going to really take notice of this gap on the side. Now, what I did was, once I cut out this wiring channel, I went and just test fitted it inside the trailer. And then noted where my power cable was passing through that foam gasket inside the air conditioner. And I took my felt marker again, much like I did the first step, and just notched out um, where I need to sort of trim back. So we're going to go ahead and just make a small notch, not to accommodate a wiring channel, but just the actual uh, power cable itself. And that's what that notch just looks like. So we have their channel pass through and then your power cord pass through. So let's go ahead and fit this into our trailer. We can now go ahead and do our final test, test fit onto the air conditioning unit. If you have any tapes on the side vents like this, now is the time to remove them prior to the installation. Because if everything is good, we're not going to be taking this out ever again, hopefully.
Now before you completely tighten things down, just give the air box cover just a quick shift just to make sure everything's aligned properly. And just double check your gaskets to ensure that the sealing is nice and uniform. And if everything's good, go ahead and firmly tighten the screws down. Double check your power connections and make sure you don't ever touch or bend this copper bulb. Now the final step in securing this air distribution box to the ceiling is to go ahead and install these, um, it looks like almost a one and a quarter inch screw uh, that's supplied by Dometic into the eight holes that are located here, here, and sort of all the different quadrants of our air box. Now remember, on this particular Forest River pop-up, and in fact many pop-ups, the ceilings are generally not very thick at all, uh, about an inch or just slightly more than that. So even with the thickness of this cover, you possibly could run the risk of puncturing into the fiberglass roof on the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use an equivalent size uh, sheet metal screw that's only about half inch uh, in length. And so when I pass through the cover, I'm only going to probably be penetrating the roof by a quarter inch. And remember, there's some big screws holding it onto the plate already. Um, you're just putting these on to prevent this vibration when it's running. And so uh, since I'm not using some self-tapping screws, I'm just going to go ahead and drill some tiny pilot screws in the eight corners and sort of just install these screws as I go along. Now, I always find it advisable to install the screws no more than two at a time and then drilling holes as you go along because as you install the screws this cover could potentially shift which would then cause uh, some fitment issues. And remember when you're drilling pay careful attention you don't puncture through the that you're only puncturing through the ceiling on the inside by stopping the minute it punches through the first layer. Because if you keep pushing, well, you're gonna go and puncture your ceiling, right? Or through the, through the top. Continue on. Just give the unit a good vacuuming to remove any metal particles generated from the drilling. So once we cleaned out all the particles and dust, and just giving the unit now a quick wipe down, just to tidy up the installation. We now go ahead and install the control knobs onto the unit by just pressing onto them in the appropriate direction as they are keyed. Like so, and we've got our finishing covers that go on the end.
Now the next step to getting our air conditioning system all permanently wired up inside our trailer is to add the outside um, cable that will plug into the top roof uh, power pass through. And so to do this, we need to get into cabling our AC unit to this 20 amp breaker that Forest Server has already provided. But in doing so, we need to open up our access panels and then remove the two screws that was once located here and there and then take this out to fully expose the uh, converter box area. Next we're going to open up the access of this panel by taking the screws off here and here. Now once we've removed our pa power panel, you can sort of see here that we've got our existing 15 amp outlet wired through here by this cable if you can sort of see it from my angle of view right here we've got our big shore power feed cable coming here and then you also notice that on the side we've got some knockouts which we're going to actually use where we can insert one of these half inch sort of cable relief adapters into the box you just knock that out by punching it and then inserting this adapter in that will hold our new number 12 cable The next step now is take some number 12 cabling and just going to feed it down through the side or the back side of this converter box area into the power panel area. I insert, or I stripped off about 10 inches or so of insulation on the outer jacket of my number 12 cabling and then used a Thomas and Betts uh, half inch knockout wiring retainer cuff um, that will essentially act, well, it'll just basically snap into place once everything is complete. But before doing so, we're going to feed the cabling through our control panel, or power panel, sorry. With the knockout relatively in the right spot. And then we're going to stop out this breaker the panel such that we can actually cable it in properly. The reason why we want to do this is that inside this converter box it's actually a very tight fit. It's so tight in fact that it can actually be difficult to get the wiring underneath the breaker. So this is why I wanted you guys to cut off that excess cabling. So once we pop that out we can go ahead and just insert that into the breaker. Repeat the same procedure for your neutrals. Now if you don't have any more neutrals inside your box, you're going to have to combine some of your connections. And in this case, I'm just going to tie it in with this braided connector used, to, used as the neutral for the power converter. Make sure none of your neutrals have popped out or loosened up from their original positions. And just firmly snug up that cable. And last but not least, we have our ground connection, which again, we're going to have to tie into an existing ground on the panel. Again, 
tightening up our connections. And interestingly enough, I found that the main feeder ground to the shore power was actually very loose, meaning that the grounding was poor. So in the event of a short, we may not actually have breakers trip properly. Now that everything is wired up properly in our power converter panel, we want to now select an appropriate location to mount our GFI outlet. And so before we reinstall the panel back into the uh, cabinetry, we just want to make sure that on the back side of where I want to mount the outlet, which is directly right inside here, but on the opposite side, that there's no wires that you could possibly puncture when you're installing the junction box. Reinstall the cover assembly. Long screw on the right. Short screw on the left. So I was thinking of installing my junction box in the general vicinity of right around in here, which is where that pass-through is going to go. But I want to give myself some appropriate space so that the coil can be reinserted back into this cavity without jamming up against the junction box and possibly snagging the outlet. So this is what that 20 amp GFI outlet looks like once it's been installed. As you can see here, I use a surface mount box, the same sort of uh, box grommet that I use on the converter and it just wraps around to the back side where it makes the connection into the power converter so to build our cord it is fairly straightforward all we actually need preferably is a weatherized connector end. Um, in my case I couldn't source them so I'm just using regular extension cord ends and that's why I have a GFI installed in my trailer that supports the T-slot 20 amp um, 125 volt spec and then the corresponding end to plug into my outlet that I just installed the trailer. And so the whole idea here is that this cord will pass through into the trailer and then um, it's a number 12 gauge wire by the way uh, and it'll pass through the pass through outlet on the side of my trailer and then hook into the very top and of course I'm going to leave a bit of excess wire as a drip loop so rain and what have you doesn't get in and so I think the easiest way to do it is to pop the trailer up to its maximum height and then do my measurements from there so what I'm going to do here is take my end and firmly plug it in to the roof power connector like so. And then from there, I'm going to raise the roof up to its maximum height and then do my measurements. So now that my maximum height has been established, the whole idea is to ensure that the cable will be able to pass through this new hole that I've created and into the power outlet. So if my cord pulls into the power control panel area, I'm gonna now pull out enough cord such that I can hook it away from the furnace outlet, as well as give me a water drip loop when water does run down here so that it doesn't make its way back in the trailer. And so I've given myself probably an extra foot and a half of cable and then I'll probably give myself another three quarters of a foot on the inside where the outlet is. So this is the core with the drip loop already outside. I said I'd give myself a little extra slack. So I'm going to cut my cable right around here. Now the other thing I want to mention is that when you're making an extension cord, you want to pay attention that you don't nick the insulation on the inside conductors. Um, apparently, any damage 
bit of insulation with enough current draw, even with an air conditioner, can actually cause um, arcing or uh, a breakdown of the insulation. So you just want to be cognizant of that fact when you're building your, your cords. Now make sure your connections are nice and tight. You don't want this coming apart over time, especially with the changes in temperature that an RV can typically see in a season. And once that's all hooked up, that's what it looks like. Okay, now I'll go ahead and install this plug back into its case. And when you're completed, you can just tuck that excess cable into this hole in the wheel well and then plug it in to your 20 amp outlet. Let's go ahead and hook up the power to our trailer and test fire it. Now it's also worth mentioning guys that anytime you go to the campground uh, or to an RV site that you want to make sure that if you're using an extension cord that it's at least a number 10 or sorry at least a number 12 rating preferably a number 10 as you can see here I've got a really thick shore power cable to tie into my trailer uh, never under any circumstances should you ever use a 14 gauge power connector or a 14 gauge or smaller extension cord when your pop-up has something like air conditioning. Let's go ahead and turn the converters power on and the AC. Test our GFI outlet to make sure it works, which it does. Temperature set to cold and let's turn it on. Oh, you can hear the compressor kick on. Turn the fan on low, which is quite crazy. It's actually quite loud, and it's not the compressor, it's actually just the fan. And I can already tell that it's getting real cold. As you can tell from my demonstration, installing a rooftop air conditioner on your pop-up trailer isn't overly difficult nor time-consuming. It took me about four and a half hours to do the install end to end, including all the electrical and finishing work. And the benefits that it's going to bring me and my family is gonna be enormous. I hope you found this video useful and informative. Rate, comment, and subscribe, and happy camping season.